Okay, over the last few weeks, I've been talking about this book that I received last month. I keep trying to catch his eye, A Memoir of Loss, Grief, and Love, written by Ivan Maisel, one of my favorites on the college football scene. This is not a book, this is not a segment about Herm Edwards and ASU against Washington State. This is in our Starting the Conversation platform in mental health, in sports, crossing over. Um, last month when we did our deep dive on Zach Hoffpower at Stanford who had passed away and I visited with his parents inside and out, I thought of this book with Ivan and some of the, some of the places that he went to. And, um, and I appreciate you coming on for a few minutes to talk about a book about your son and your journey after his death. Is that the best way to sum this up? I think that's a really good way to sum it up. Thanks for having me. I felt it was important to write the book so that Max wouldn't be defined by how he died, but I wanted to say how he lived. And also I just wanted to, uh, I, we have such a struggle with grief mm -hmm. and, and I certainly did before I was thrust into it. And I wanted to try to explain people how I handled grief, how I learned to handle grief and how I was comforted, you know, what worked for me. And with the idea of uh, helping people, because we as Americans just struggle with grief. The, uh, I'm going to read a, a segment here just off the top. I was going to save this for later, but since you did bring it up, and this is what caught my eye, you know, as I went through this book, I get to page 12 and it's back in mid, mid to late September. And this is about people who don't know how to grieve. I have been, and I'm reading from the book, I have been on the receiving end of a litany of well-meaning, perfunctory responses, reassurances that Max has gone to a better place. Queries whether after weeks or months I felt better as if losing Max could be cured with an antibiotic. The question, is it still hard or no response at all? I do not like euphemisms unless they're employed for humor. I do not like passed away. I do not like no longer with us. Gone to his glory or met his maker. Max died. He is dead and softening the language doesn't soften the blow. Sugarcoating doesn't make it easy for anyone but the person saying it. The person who may tiptoe around the loss with cloak language and continue on with his day. And there's more to it than that. That's just page 12. So I'm telling you all out there that grief and what Ivan went through in this book, if it doesn't move you, nothing will. Um, was it hard for you to get to that space? And that's really early in the book too. It, well, it wasn't hard for me to write. It was hard for me to, to live. Uh, but I, uh, you know, honestly, I, uh, People, again, you know, it, it's kind of it's a different way to say the same thing. People just struggle. And and they I think employing euphemisms like those you just you know, you just read is done you know, for them. You know, we're those of us who lost the person, you know, we we're experiencing it every moment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't have to sugarcoat it for us. You know, we we know he's gone. We know he died. Uh, you know, people would come up to me and say, well, I didn't want to bring him up to you, you know, and look, I'm thinking about him every second, you know, so, and, and honestly, I want you to bring him up, you know, it keeps him present. Mm -hmm. the, uh, the, the, the part of this, what I'm reading is how did your family come on board with this? Or was that a struggle, your <laughs> wife, your kids and, and just with the book? That, yeah. Yeah. With the book, with the book, obviously. Yeah. yeah they are. Uh, we all feel like this is my story. This is not their story. Okay. And uh, when I finished the manuscript, you know, I handed it or emailed it uh, to all three of them and said, you know, whatever you're comfortable, whatever you're uncomfortable with, let's talk about it and I'll fix it. And if I can't fix it to your liking, I'll take it out. And if you're still not comfortable with it, I'll send them their money back. You know, it's just, it wasn't, you know, the book's not that important to cause any kind of rift and, and God bless all three of them. You know, my wife, Meg and, and our daughters, Sarah and Elizabeth, they were, have been great supporters of, of it. And, and in a way, I hope it keeps Max presence present for them too. Sure. Um, do you believe you've helped people through this book? Well, I hope so. You know, I, you know, we'll find out as they purchase it and, and respond to it. 
you know, but that, that was one of my hopes is that I wanted to be, uh, you know, the phrase I use in the book was a docent through my grief. You know, this is what worked. This is what didn't work. Don't be scared of this. And, and let's face it, if you live long enough, you're going to have to deal with grief. It's just part of life. Death is part of life. And, and I was in my mid fifties before I got, you know, hit in the face with it. But, uh, I, I sure know it now. Is it cathartic? No, you know, I feel like I had to do all my work before I could sit down at this laptop and start writing, you know, cathartic to me is you, uh, you pay me and, uh, and I'll dump all my problems in your lap. And, and I didn't want to do that. You know, I don't think that's fair to the reader. Uh, I feel like I had to sort of get my legs under me before I started writing. <laughs> You know, the, getting through a book, and I've talked to authors in the past, there comes a point where they have people that just have to kind of nudge them to get it across the finish line in many cases, not all, but in many cases. Did you have that in this in this book? Well, I had to, <laughs> I hate to put it this way, but the pandemic was a gift. Mm. Uh, you know, all of a sudden my work shrunk, uh, shriveled up and I had this amor- enormous amount of time last year. So that was just a you know sort of a you know happy accident. Uh, no, it, only in the sense that I had a, a terrific agent, uh, Nina Madonia, and and I think maybe how I would phrase it is I had a good friend who sort of kicked me in the butt about at the beginning of 2020 and just shook me and said, you know, when are you going to write about Max? Mm. And I had been sort of thinking, you know, it, it, I think now is the right time. And and, and Sue Shattuck, uh, my college friend, sort of, you know, grabbed me and said, do it. And I went, okay, it, you know, now's the time. Came over the table, if I remember reading it right. That was the phrase. It, not quite literally, but close. Yeah. <laughs> Max passed in February of 2015. Um, his uh, He went missing. His body washed up on Lake Ontario, Um about eight weeks later. And so Ivan and his journey has come to this with the book being released now. What have you heard back in terms of feedback early on? Well, people really seem to be touched uh, and and a little uh, gobsmacked by the fact that Mm. I am so open. Uh, But honestly, I kind of decided, and Meg and I, my wife Meg and I, decided early on we were going to put it all out there that we, you know we weren't ashamed of Max, we weren't uh, going to deal with the stigma uh, of mental illness, you know, or, or or exceed to the stigma of mental illness, and you know, there's no shame in being sick. And the other thing was. Uh, I, and it was a, a little bit of self-protection, just that I didn't want to have to worry about, you know, who had top secret clearance, who was I going to tell everything to, who was I going to tell some things to, you know, I, it was all I could do to any of us could do to put one foot in front of the other. So just put it all out there. You know, w- w- the worst thing that could happen had already happened. Right. Um, you had a moment in the book and I don't want to give it all away. And again, it's, it is out if you folks want to, Make sure you go out and purchase it. And Ivan Maisel with us for a few minutes. And that is a moment you had with Mark Helfrich. And um, Mark's a good man who was here at Arizona State many, many, many moons ago. Yes. And was at Oregon uh, when this moment happened. And so I do want to bring in the college football family side of it to you and how you found coaches and others going back to your profession with ESPN and going back to business and how that moment impacted you. So Max died in February, you know, the, the, the depth of the off season by June, I could feel the season approaching. And I thought, you know, you try to get back on the horse. And I went out to Oregon to do a piece and I had an early morning meeting with Mark an interview and he only had about half an hour. And after about 25 minutes, I closed my notebook, you know, and, and I was, I was kind of glassy eyed at that point, mm. to be honest with you. You know, it was, I was really tentative and Mark, you know, just said, uh, okay, can I ask you a question? <laughs> sure. 
He said, how are you doing? Mm. And I just sort of melted right there in his office. Yeah. Uh, you know, and I'm getting choked up now thinking about it, but, um, it, it turned, you know, he was dealing with his own grief and, and we sat there and talked, uh, for another 15, 20 minutes, he was late to his next meeting, but, uh, it was just such a kind gesture and, and, I uh, ne obviously never forgot it. I put it in the book, but there were a number of coaches as I re-entered my workspace mm -hmm. over the, the summer and, and over that 2015 season that before I could do anything would stop, uh, before I could ask any question would, you know, ask me how I was doing, uh, tell me about somebody in their world and their family that was having struggles and, it was just very kind. People were very nice. Yeah. Well, it was it was a great read um, just as a reader, but as someone who has gone through grief and lost myself, um, it really did touch me in many, many ways. I appreciate your time and your insights. Thanks so much for having me. The book is out. I Keep Trying to Catch His Eye, a memoir of loss, grief, and love. Please pick this up. It will impact you. We're back with more after this time out.